Hello and welcome to Press TV News Analysis. I'm Kavit Hafai. The U.S. announcement about the alleged death of Osama bin Laden has raised more questions than answers because of the ambiguities and the way U.S. officials, including the U.S. president himself, have presented the details at times contradictory, like him being armed, which later was corrected. Yet even the crime which he allegedly masterminded, the actual 9-11 incident, has been filled with question marks in which one observer stated, why not detain and question bin Laden instead of killing him and deposing his body at the sea. Questions about the death of Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden multiply as time goes by and more details about the commando-style U.S. operation in Pakistan is out. On Tuesday, a White House spokesman said that bin Laden was not armed at the time of the assault. In the room with bin Laden, a woman Bin Laden's, a woman, rather, bin Laden's wife, rushed the U.S. assaulter and was shot in the leg but not killed. Bin Laden was then shot and killed. He was not armed. The revelation that bin Laden was unarmed contradicts an earlier U.S. account that he had participated in a firefight with American commandos. The fact is now raising the question as to why U.S. President Barack Obama ordered the king of the world's most wanted man from the White House why he could have been captured and brought to justice. A U.S. national security official has said the special forces team that killed bin Laden was under orders to kill him, not to capture him. Throwing his body at sea in less than 24 hours, which many Muslims say was not Islamic, has also raised doubts. A local government official in Abbottabad says the man who was killed in a luxury compound in that area on Monday was not Osama bin Laden. If they had killed him, they should have brought him into the open. They killed some women belonging to Osama's family. They may have killed an important man, saying he was Osama. U.S. media on Wednesday said President Barack Obama would not release bin Laden's death photos. The refusal to release any evidence of the killing is raising even more questions. Washington says it has pictures of the dead bin Laden, but it will not release them because they are gruesome. However, graphic images of other terrorists killed in U.S. airstrikes have been released, including those of Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, who was killed in Iraq in 2006. Suspicions and conspiracy theories about bin Laden's death, September 11 attacks, and the consequent U.S. wars will continue to grow if Washington fails to prove killing the al-Qaeda head in the coming weeks and months. Well, it does seem there's lots more questions and ambiguities regarding this. Let's see if we can get some answers from our guests, which include author and historian Webster Tarpley, who joins us from Washington. We have editor of Culture Wars magazine, Hello. Eugene Michael Jones, joining us from South Bend, Indiana and writer and radio host Stephen Lenman, who joins us from Chicago. Thank you all for joining us in this news analysis. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to go to Stephen Lenman. Uh, uh, bin Laden was blamed for being the mastermind behind the 9-11 attacks, and according to the FBI, however, there is not even evidence hinting at such a connection. So let's get that straight for, with an opinion from you, the connection between bin Laden and the 9-11 attacks, which was made by the Bush Cheney administration at the morning of the attacks. Well, uh, there's no connection whatsoever. Uh, think, of, think of it this way. We have two topics today, 9-11 and the Sunday raid allegedly killing uh, uh, bin Laden. Uh, we're talking about the big lie of our time, 9-11, and the lie of the moment, killing bin Laden last Sunday. It would have been a neat trick if we did it because he died of natural causes in mid-December 2001. Uh, who said it? Well, for one thing, a Taliban official who attended his funeral uh, years ago, he made the statement. Uh, former President of Pakistan, uh, Musharraf, Benazir Bhutto, before she was killed. Uh, the former FBI head of counterintelligence, uh, uh, counterintelligence, I think his name was Watson. I'm not sure, maybe Webster knows his name. Uh, other people made the same statement. 
In 2002, George Bush was interviewed about uh, bin Laden. Uh, he said he really lost interest in him. He really didn't care about him anymore. The CIA, a few years later, shut down its search agency, supposedly looking for bin Laden. Well, why look for a dead man? So we have the big lie about 9-11. Uh, bin Laden, of course, had nothing whatsoever to do with it. He gave interviews to Al Jazeera several times saying he had no knowledge and no involvement in 9-11. Yet, Al Jazeera twisted his statement claiming that he admitted responsibility for it. He did not. He had nothing to do with 9-11. Your president, Ahmadinejad, is right. It was an inside job. Okay, Certainly well, uh, not anything to do with bin Laden. Stephen Levin, some of the things that you say there uh, obviously point to, to this next question, which I'd like to uh, address uh, to uh, uh, Dr. Tarpley. I mean, uh, there are doubts about uh, uh, the release of the photos and images of bin Laden's death. Even the CIA director, Leon Panetta, said it would, it would be released, but then Barack Obama very recently has decided uh, not to. And I think Panetta actually uh, put the sentiment of what many people are thinking, and that is, and I quote him, I think... We have to uh, reveal to the rest of the world the fact that we were able to get him and kill him. We couldn't refer to former Bosnian Serb President Radvan Karadzic. There was a video of him. We can even point to Jandola leader Abdul Malik Rigi, responsible for the killing, the terrorist responsible for the killing of many Iranians. When he was captured, there was a video of him. Why was that not released? Why did the U.S. decided not to, uh, the U.S. president, not to release this video or photos? I don't think it's profitable to try to enter too much into the, into the details and the contradictions of this piece of theater that we've been uh, presented with. This is an exercise in mass brainwashing. It is a, a very serious attempt, I think, to push the world in the direction of general war. Uh, the one thing we can say about this pseudo bin Laden, if that's really who he was, uh, was that he was not the biological bin Laden, as, as has been pointed out. The biological bin Laden has not been with us for a long time. The original bin Laden, while he was alive, was variously described as a dreamer, a fanatic, an ideologue, a psychotic, a bungler, a misfit. Uh, the figurehead of an organization that had been created by the CIA and by British MI6 and who was largely supervised by the MI6 double agent Zawahiri of Egypt, who seems to be the person who runs this all. I think the, the one thing we can say for sure is that this staged and manufactured incident, and of course it's, it's just like everything else in bin Laden's life, <laughs> or the so-called bin Laden's life, uh, nothing, nothing is proven. There is no proof of any aspect of this entire story. But the one thing you can see from the intent is this is designed to create a strategic confrontation between the United States and Pakistan. It has already gone very far in that direction. The, the, it looks like this raid, as far as we can see, was at least on some level not uh, approved by the Pakistani government. We have President, uh, former President Musharraf protesting against that. Mm -hmm. We have the hue and cry here in Washington against Pakistan. We have the Chinese government yesterday strongly stating that they're going to support Pakistan in this crisis. We should remember that American policy in that part of the world has absolutely nothing to do with the so-called global war on terror, which is merely a strategic pretext manufactured by the United States. The goal of this all is the dismemberment of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan could serve as an energy corridor between Iran and China, or between uh, India and, uh, and, and Europe. And, and that Wasn't Afghanistan, Afghanistan supposed to do that there, Dr. Tarpley? It's not enough. Uh, the, the, the Pakistan energy corridor could be created, and the, the goal of the U.S. policy remains to take the Afghan civil war and to export that into Pakistan and to promote the division along the well-known lines of Punjabis, Sindhs, Baluchistan. You've mentioned Rigi, uh, obvious, uh, supported by, by NATO and so forth, and then, uh, of course, Pushtunistan, which is the, the, the epicenter of all this. So okay. this is what we can see. And I think the, the real question is, will this story now manufactured about bin Laden be the equivalent of the Sarajevo assassination of June 22, 1914? Are we now in a, in a six or eight or ten week period between an incident and some 
cataclysmic uh, geostrategic event, a general war that might grow out of the United States overplaying this attack on Pakistan mm -hmm. when you see that the Chinese are coming forward to offer support. I think the world situation is much more dangerous than, than most people okay. are, are, are aware of in this Kind well, of, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about uh, the strategic pretext that you mentioned there, Dr. Tarpley. Let me bring in uh, Eugene Jones. Uh, and of course, we talked about uh, touched on Afghanistan. Eugene Jones, though, this is uh, I'm going to reflect on what a uh, official uh, has uh, said. He said that the U.S. forced uh, 10 years of war on three countries, Iraq, Afghanistan and Pakistan, left a million people dead, spent more than a thousand billion dollars to kill one person. I mean, does bin Laden uh, and his death prove in this case in point about Afghanistan, that that war was futile. I think it does. I think that, that if there's a message that comes out of the, the, uh, this incident, I think it's America's way now of getting out of Afghanistan because I think now they realize that they've wasted 10 years in Afghanistan while the Arab world has moved beyond the situation that they envisaged. This whole upheaval now throughout the uh, Arabic world has nothing to do with terrorism. It has to do with demonstrations against puppet regimes. And we saw what happened in Egypt when, they, when the people took power. They organized a unity government in Palestine. So this has nothing to do with terrorism. But the United States was left high and dry fighting a, a, a war that really wasn't there. It, it, it didn't exist. It, 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 there was no reason for them to be there. Uh, the 9-11 the attacks were used as a pretext to invade these countries and to engage, uh, at least in, certainly in Afghanistan, in the social uh, engineering of those people. And I think what this means is that all of that has failed. All of that has failed, and now they have to regroup and deal with the situation that sort of took them by surprise.